Hi Krishna, welcome to all the devotees <coughs> to our weekly Bhakti Vedu class. So, in the last week, we were discussing from chapter 9, wherein the Pandavas being requested by Krishna, Vyasadeva and other elderly people accepting the of course, Yudhishthira Maharaj accepted the process of coronation, became the king, not willingly, but somehow just to satisfy Bhishma. And in good attire, they all came to the battlefield of Kurukshetra, understanding something wonderful is going to take place. The great sages of the entire universe also assembled. Bhishma received all of them very nicely. And then, he kind of uh, received Pandavas, Krishna and many great sages. <clears throat> when he was looking at the crying Pandavas, Bhishma actually pacified them. Aho kashtam, aho nyayam, yadyuyam, dharmanandana, naratim, jivutim, klishtam, vipradharma, chutashriya. These people are completely dedicated to vipra, dharma and achuta, brahmanas. Dharma and uh, Supreme Lord. You people are not expected to go through all these difficulties. But still, you have gone through. If it is for ordinary people, they will die. They cannot go through all these uh, difficulties. So not only you, your mother also gone through so many difficulties. But kindly understand that all these are not due to your Pradha Karmas. It is all due to Kala. The influence of Kala. Sarvam kala kritam manye bhavatam cha e dapriyam sapalo yad vashe loko vayu rivaganavali. Just like the clouds are carried away by the wind, similarly, the time controls even the lokapala, all the devatas under her supervision, under his supervision. Then what to speak of you? All of you are also under the supervision of time personified. Because where there is Dharmaraj, where there is Bhima, where there is Arjuna, where there is Krishna, how can we expect? Such kind of difficulties in this ordinary mortal world. These are all not due to karma, but due to the influence of Kala. But that how Kala functions, how Kala acts, no one can understand. Even the great sages, Muyanti Kavayopi, great Landi persons also gets bewildered. No, I not able to understand the nature of time works. So therefore, kindly consider that Tasma. Idam Daiva Tantram Vyavastha Bharatarshava Tasyanu Hito Nata Nata Pahi Praja Prabhu Understand everything is happening by the will of the Supreme Lord and just as everyone is requesting become the king and take care of the masterless citizens and take them to the lotus feet of Supreme Lord. That is how it is said. But ultimately you think time is somebody else here and there from their distant places controlling everything. No, the subpersonality which is standing in front of you is the time person fed, is none other than time itself. Saiva Bhagavan Sakshat Adyo Narayana Puman. It is he, this Krishna is the time himself. It is he, it is the original Bhagavan. It is he, is Narayana himself. Mohayan Maya Lokam Goda Charati Manusha. Bewildering all of us, he is moving among us like one. One of, one, one of us, but he is not a human being like us. He is actually the Supreme Personality of God and Bhagavan, the source of Narayana. And he is also the time personified. So instead of trying to inquire about his nature, just follow his desire. That will do good for you and good for everyone, etc. Even the great sages such as Narada Muni, Lord Shiva and Kapiladev can only understand few details about him, some of the activities he does, some of the pastimes that he does. But why he does what he does, even they cannot understand and what to speak of me. I cannot understand, I cannot clear you. But in spite of that, that Supreme Lord, about whose true nature cannot be understood by anyone, becomes subservient of you five Pandavas. He becomes completely controlled by your loving devotional service. There he says that Yan Matule Yam sorry Yam Manase Matule Yam Priyam Maitram Surtamam Akaro Sachivam Dutam 
सुहृदाद अत सारथी ही हॅज बिकम युअर सारथी ही हॅज बिकम युअर सुहृद वेलविशर ही हॅज बिकम युअर दूता द शांती दूता अँड ही हॅज बिकम युअर सुहृत्तमा He has become your Mitra. He has become your Priya. He has become your Matulaya. Your cousin, brother. So it's like that. He has become one of your family member, close friend, close relative. He has done everything for you. This is the greatness of that Supreme Lord. Even though he is so great, so great, cannot be understood by any great personality such as Lord Shiva, Lord Kapita, and Narada Muni also. But he becomes very much affectionate with you, Pandavas. Why? not only with you pandavas he is disposed towards everyone like that also if they are willing to take him like this sarvatmana samudrashohi advayasya avya advayasya nakrute tatkritam mai vaishamyam niravadyasya nakvachit don't think that he has becoming your duta your messenger so he has lost his position he has become lowly employed person not like that in spite of becoming your chariot driver in spite of becoming your messenger he still remains as the supreme personality of godhead he remains as sarvatmana the soul of every living entity samadrusho is equally disposed to everyone advayasya there is no one equal to him or superior to him and anahankrite he does not possess any ahankar because he knows that everything is expansion only the entire metal world is expansion all the living entities are is expansion for whom he has to show ahankar with whom he has to display his uh, egoism no everyone is a expansion only and that supreme lord who is equally disposed to everyone and he is eager to reciprocate with the devotees love and devotional sentiments and that personality tatapi ekanta bhakteshu pasya bhupanu kampitam enme asumsu tajas sakshat krishna darshanam agata and considering me as also one of the living entities among his creation knowing about my desire because he is also my paramatma out of his kadalas mercy he has come to me today to see me or to show himself to me before my departure that is his great mercy of course don't think that this grace mercy which he is showing to me is not because of my devotional service it is because of your devotional service since i am related to you he has come to me so like that bishma actually gives the credit to pandavas only even though lord krishna comes there to see him to glorify him but bishma gives all the credit to pai pandavas though it is not possible for me to be like you still see is mercy to me by which that form of brahman which is filled with bliss sachidananda swarupa has come near such a low person like me this is another of his anubhavas for it is actually to show mercy to you that he has come to me so why he is coming to me cannot be understood by anybody else something like that it is beyond logic and reasoning so in that way so that is where we have kind of stopped last week and uh, we'll continue today but in the next two hours onwards so why would lord krishna then west pranam one second one second one second why would lord reciprocate with the devotees like that there is a description in the 10 second canto say 10 chapter says that different personalities in this world perceive the lord in different ways some people see him as fulfiller of the material desires some people see him as the entire universe some people see him as the invisible energy some people see him as the light some people see him as the brahman and some people see him as paramatma some people see him as bhagavan so whatever way one surrenders to supreme lord lord reciprocates equally and accordingly like that only ittam bhavena kadito bhagavan bhagavattama netam bhavena hi param drashtum arhanti suraya the lord has been described in many scriptures as the creator of the universe some pure devotees however do not see him only as the creator of the universe so generally 
for the people in general the lord is the creator but for the pure devotees lord is more than that lord is the reciprocator or the receiver of their loving devotional service something like that the lord is not only the creator and destroyer of the material manifestations of his different energies he is more than a simple creator and destroyer for there is his feature of ananda or his pleasure potency the highest glorious association with the lord is made possible in the planet of goloka vrindavan in gokul where lord krishna enjoys himself in the association of gopis gopas mother yashoda and elderly motherly gopis and fatherly gopas and with his favorite animals the surabi cows etc etc this pleasure feature of the lord is understood by the pure devotees only not by the people in general people in general might see the lord as a energy potency light this that universal form etc 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 are to the extent of the creator but not beyond that but only the pure devotees understand about his true nature and try to reciprocate with him in loving devotional sentiments so something like that ah yes mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji dhanwad pranam prabhu ji uh, have you sent the marks for this 1.8 test no mata ji not sent okay okay prabhu ji so prabhu yeah i was just checking so i disturbed you thank you prabhu ji hari krishna hari डिस्क्राइब <laughs> Uh, the Sukhdev Goswami heard this sloka also. When uh, after yes. the birth he went to the forest, then when they heard this sloka, then they come back to study the Bhagavatam. So my mm. question is, Prabhuji, that uh, this sloka generally comes uh, actual actual conversation happens between the Vyasa uh, uh, Sukhdev Goswami and Parishit Maharaj because this is the son of Rishi conversation. Mm. So. This my my doubt is then how come this sonak the this part of uh, Bhagavatam which mm. is uh, is uh, compiled after the conversation of uh, this Sukhdev Goswami and Parichit Maharaj and he has heard this so it is like if uh, Bhagavad was previously compiled this com- uh, narration of the uh, sonak Rishi also before compiling the Bhagavatam yes yes. Whatever Bhagavatam we are reading, everything is yeah. compiled by Vasudev. Means this compiled is all the future. Uh, what are what is going to happen? That also is compiled. Yes, yes. What is going to happen also is compiled. Okay. Just this you might doubt. Thank you. Vasudev is Lord Krishna's expansion only. Can't he do that much? Yeah, yeah he can do. Hmm. Oh. So. Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna. Yes. Prabhu ji, I have found that um, Sukhdev Goswami was present in this assembly. Hmm. Yes, he was present. If you read that part, Prabhupada actually talks about Sukhdev Goswami elaborately. Maybe one or two paragraphs talks about him. Prabhu ji, is it like that? Prabhu ji, what are going to be incarnate where it is also mentioned in the future thing? What is that? Ah, Kalki Avatar. That is also mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Yes, his activities are also mentioned. So, Mataji, what is your question? Sukhdev Goswami is mentioned in this uh, chapter, so. But uh, after passing away of uh, Bhishma Dev and after the um, Parikshit Maharaj, uh, Sukhdev Goswami uh, was born, na, Prabhu ji, if I am not wrong. No, no, no. Sukhdev Goswami was born much before. When Pandavas were in Vanavas, that time Sukadev Goswami was born, and after birth he was he left home and traveling here and there. By the way, he also came to this battle of Kurukshetra after the battle was over, when everyone was going to battle of Kurukshetra to hear what Bhishma is going to speak. So he also came. He heard the entire discussion of Bhishma and Yudhishthir. Then again he went to forest. 
wandering from one forest to other forest. Hmm. See, for the celestial personalities, the 16 years is mentioned like that. They look like 16 year old boy. Krishna is also Santam Vaisik Aishore. It always looks like 16 year old boy. Like that, Sukadeva Gosimi also looks like 16 year old boy. He may be of any age. He was born. In fact, he stayed in the womb of his mother for 13 years, 13 long years. He was born as a 13 years old ch ch child. As soon as he was born, he was after coming out of the womb, he just walking out, uh, away out of the home. As a 13 years old boy. And such kind of people never grow beyond 16 years. In the sense, their look is like that of a 16 years old boy. Their age might be more than that, maybe hundreds of years. It is like that. Based on the okay. appearance, it is said that they, he is 16 years old only, like that. Thank you. Thank you. Haribo. Haresh. Okay. So we'll continue on with the verse number 23 onwards. Now what else Bhishma has to say? Bhaktya Vesha Mano Yasmin Vacha Yen Nama Kirta Yen Tejan Kalevaram Yogi Muchate Kama Karma Bhi Someone read the translation. The personality of Godhead who appears in the mind of the devotee by attentive devotion and meditation and by chanting of the holy name releases the devotee from the bondage of fruitive activities at the time of his quitting the material body. Mm -hmm. One important aspect, how a devotee should conduct oneself when the death is approaching. Bhaktya Vesha Mano Yasmin Vacha Yennama Kirtayan Tyajan Kalevaram Yogi Muchate Kama Karma Bhi The devotee, anyone whose mind is completely absorbed in Krishna Bhaktya Mana Yasmin Avesha As Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 9th chapter and also 18th chapter That kind of mind is completely immersed in Lord Krishna Whose mind is absorbed in Krishna completely and whose wife chants his name? Sadatam kirtayan to maam. Etan tassa duravrata. Vacha ennama kirtayan. Vacha, one words, are always only chanting Lord's names. Such kind of person becomes completely freed from all karmas. Muchyate kama karma bi. They become freed from all the material desires, kama. And also all the material activities, karma. Muchyate kama karma bi. Then what happens? Tajan Kalevaram on giving up the material body. Tajan Kalevaram. So, when death is approaching, when a devotee's mind is completely absorbed in Krishna and their words are chanting Lord's holy names, so after giving up their body, they will be freed of all the material desires and all the material activities. That means they will go back home, back to Godhead. So, that is the understanding. So in this regard, Sri Prabhupada writes very nice, nice points in the purport, the first, the first part of the entire paragraph. Prabhupada writes, Yoga means concentration of the mind detached from all other subject matter. And actually such concentration is Samadhi or cent percent engagement in the service of the Lord. And one who concentrates his attention in that matter, in that manner is called a Yogi. Such a yogi devotee of the Lord engages himself 24 hours daily in the service of the Lord so that his whole attention is engrossed with the thoughts of the Lord in ninefold devotional service. Namely, hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping, praying, becoming a voluntary servant, carrying out orders, establishing a friendly relationship or offering all that one may possess in service of the Supreme Lord. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmanivedanam. It's like that. By such practice of yoga, 
are linking up in the service of the Lord. One is recognized by the Lord himself, as it is explained in the Bhagavad Gita, concerning the highest perfectional stage of Samadhi. So, the Lord calls such a rare devotee the best among all the yogis. So, it is like that. Such kind of a yogi devotee will easily attain shelter at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, like that. So, this is uh, how our Bhishma is suggesting that how one should cultivate the consciousness at the time of death. So, such kind of consciousness will award them shelter at the lotus feet of Supreme Lord. Something like that. So, some references. Um, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, please proceed, Prabhu. I'll ask later. So, some references from Bhagavad Gita. We can see here. Tapasi biodiko yogi jnani biodiko mata jnani biopi matodikam karmi bias chadiko yogi tasmad yogi bavarjuna. So, end of sixth chapter, after elaborately speaking about sakama karma, nishkama karma, jnana, ashtanga yoga, at the end, Lord is talking about, according to me, the ashtanga yogi, the worshipara paramatma, he is better than the tapasvi. Tapasvibhyo adhiko yogi. Yogi refers to the Ashtanga Yoga practitioner. He is better than the practitioner of Tapasya. What kind of Tapasya? This is better than the Tapasvi, who is the performer of austerity such as difficult Chandrayana Rata, etc. And the Ashtanga Yogi he is better than the Jnani. Jnani Biopi Matovadika. It is my opinion that Ashtanga Yogi is better than the Jnani, who is the worshipper of Brahman. And this Ashtanga Yogi is better than the Karmi. Karmi Bhyas Chadiko Yogi is better than the Karma Yogi. Therefore, be a Yogi. So, Indra Lord is telling that. Better than Karma Yogi is Jnana Yogi. Better than Jnana Yogi, Tapasvi Yogi. Better than Tapasvi Yogi is Ashtanga Yogi. Therefore, be a Yogi. Be a Ashtanga Yogi. Something like that Lord says. So, Arjuna looks at Krishna. You want me to become Ashtanga Yogi or what? It is very difficult to practice. Then, Lord Krishna says, Yogi Nama Pi Sarvesha Madgati Nantar Atmana. Shraddhavan bhajate yomam same yuktatamo matha. Wherein he says that, but I consider he who worships me with faith. Shraddhavan worships me with faith. Bhajate yomam. With mind attached to me. Mat gatena antaratmana. With mind attached to me. To be greater than all types of yogis. Same yukta tamo matha. Yukta tama means the best among all the yogis. Yukta connected to yoga, yogi. Best among all the yogis is one who consider who worships me with faith and whose mind is completely attached to me. And uh, such kind of a yogi, uh, that such kind of a person is greater than the jnanis, tapasvis, and the karmis. So, it's like that. Among all the processes, such as Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Tapa Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga and Bhakti Yoga, he who worships me, he who is my devotee, has the best process that is called Yukta Tama. Yukta means general and Yukta Tara means superlative, uh, relative and Yukta Tama is superlative, something like that. Karmis, Tapasvis and Jnanis are considered Yogis, that is Yukta. The Nishkama Karma Yogis, Tapasvis and Jnana Yogis, they are considered to be Yogis. That is Yukta. Ashtanga Yogi is better than, better, Ashtanga Yogi is a better Yogi. He is called Yukta Tara. And he who practices Bhakti with hearing and chanting, however, is the best Yogi, Yukta Tama. So, devotee is the best. Ashtanga Yogi is better. And others, the Nishkama Karma Yogis, Tapasvis and Jnana Yogis, they are all Yukta. So, this is the gradation we can understand by studying Bhagavad Gita. So, here what Bhishma is telling is what Krishna is telling both are same. So, both of them are telling that be a devotee, not be a karma yogi or tapasvi or a jnana yogi or ashtanga yogi because a devotee is guaranteed to become Lord's eternal associate. So, it's like that. Yes, Prabhu.
So then, here it said that Bhaktya Vesha Mano Yasmin, being filled by devotional devotion, one should actually meditate on the Supreme Lord. What form of the Lord should be meditated? That is mentioned in the next verse. Sadeva Devo Bhagavan Pratikshatam Kale Varam Yavadidam Yinomiham Prasan Mahasa Runalochanolasan Mukam Bujo Dhyana Patas Chatur Buja May my Lord, who is four handed and who is beautiful decorated lotus face with eyes as red as the raging sun is smiling kindly await me at that moment when I quit this material body. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So he is requesting the Lord to show his form and what kind of form is described in this verse. May that Krishna who is time personified, who is Bhagavan, who is non-different from Lord Narayana, who is the Lord of all Lords, Deva Deva, Sadeva Devo, Bhagavan. Uh, what is the form of that Bhagavan? With glowing lotus face. Ullasat Mukambujo. His uh, lotus face is brightly shining. Consisting of red eyes, Arunalochana. And pleasing smile, Prasanna Hasa. And his form contains four arms, Chaturbuja. And that Lord is the object of my meditation. Dhyana Pata is the object of my meditation. Let he remain before me while I drink his beauty and praise him before giving up this body. Yavat kalevaram idam inomiham. This is my desire. Just before I give up my body, I would like to have darshan of that Lord whose face is brightly shining with red eyes and pleasing smile and whose form is the object of meditation consisting of four hands. And let him, let him stand in front of me. Let me relish the beauty of his transcendental form and let me offer my prayers and let him hear those prayers. Then I will give up my body. This was the desire of Bhishma and Lord Krishna came now in front of him to fulfill that desire of Bhishma. It's like that. Ye etamam prapadjante tam straiva bajam him. Bhishma had developed the desire to see the Lord and Lord is reciprocating by showing his form to Bhishma so that Bhishma will become happy. So this is the relationship between the devotees and the Supreme Lord. Nishla Prabhupada at the end of the purport writes very nice points. Um, Bhishma desired that the Lord stay before him in his four-handed Narayana feature so that he might concentrate upon him and thus be in trance in the meditation. Then his mind might be satisfied with thinking of the Lord. Thus he did not mind whether he might go. A pure devotee is never very anxious to go back to the kingdom of God. He entirely depends on the good will of the Lord. He is equally satisfied even if the Lord desires him to go to hell. The only desire that a pure devotee entertains is that he may always be in rapt attention with thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. Regardless, Bhishma Deva wanted this much only, that his mind be absorbed in thinking of the Lord and that he passes away thus. That is the highest ambition of a pure devotee. So Prabhupada says that every pure devotee should have this one ambition, that let me able to see the transcendental form of the Lord at the time of death. Because whatever we see, whatever we remember at the time of death is what we get it after death. So we should be careful uh, what we are doing throughout our life and what is our aspiration at the end of our life. So in that way. Bhishma says that, may he remain here until I, after some time, after drinking the sweetness of his beauty with my eyes, after I praise him, and reveal what is in my mind and then give up my body. So I want Lord to be in front of me for three things. That is to drink his beauty, one thing, and to offer my prayers unto him and to give up my body. May he with four arms who should at all times be the object of my meditation, since he is my object of worship with his pleasing form and smile, 
remain directly in front of my eyes at the time of my passing from the body. So Bhishma Deva addressed Lord Krishna here as a form with four arms because that was the form of Lord Krishna mentioned in the mantra he used during meditation. In one of the future verses, Bhishma tells about Lord Krishna's four arms form, four armed form. So that is the general meditation of Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev is the Aishwarya Bhakta. So he is, since he is Aishwarya Bhakta, he wants to worship the Vasudev form of Krishna. That way, the way he appeared in the prison cell when he appeared from the Devaki's womb, something like that. So it is like his bhakti is Aishwarya Bhakti. So that's how he is, think, he is praying that may the Lord be visible in front of me with four arms, something like that. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hi, yes, Mataji. And uh, in, uh, we have a tradition of uh, this Vishnu Sahasram. It was uh, said to be uh, uh, the praises of the Lord sung by Vishnu Deva. So, mm. Is it that form? Means at this point, it must have happened. Though it is not recorded in the Bhagavatam. Yeah, seems that I don't I have not read Mahabharata completely step by step. But Vishnu Sahasranam also comes in that Shanti Parva or Anushasana Parva only. I think that they are also the prayers. Um, to the request of Vidhishtu Maharaj's various questions, Bhishma answered. Later on, a couple of verses we will see. So, it is part of that section. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Ah, Prabhuji. I have a question. Now, as a devotee, we should uh, remember. Uh, we should aspire to remember four hundred form or just uh, simple or Krishna. Whichever so, Krishna, form, whichever form of the Lord attracts your heart, you need to pray for that form. But for four hundred form, we will go to Vaikuntha. Is it? If that that Lord is attracting you, you will go there, right? Nah? But the highest is Golok, there. right, Prabhuji? See, that's what I'm saying, Prabhuji. If you are aspiring to go to Goloka, you will be attracted to Goloka form. Um, it is our in, subject too. But in Vaikuntha and the Goloka, the reciprocation is different, right, Prabhuji? If Bhishma, being the purest devotee, mm. I mean, uh, why is he aspiring for Vaikuntha? Bhishma is the Aishwarya Bhakta. He is the devotee of that order only. He will aspire that. No problem. Okay. Don't um, uh, underestimate the devotional service in Vaikuntha is less than that of uh, Goloka. Bhakti is same. The flavor is different. Some devotees want to serve the Lord in Aishwarya. Some devotees want to serve the Lord in Madhurya. Madhurya is then Goloka and Aishwarya is then Vaikuntha. That's all. That is the difference. There is nothing superior, nothing inferior in the spiritual world. Okay. In comparison to infinity, Infinity, infinity minus one, is that less? Yeah, that is right. But Prabhuji, we were, we were, you know, taught like this. Like, if a person is at home, he is in his yeah. actual form. But if he is in office, then yeah. he will be very professional, right? So in that way, Prabhuji, the reciprocation. Prabhuji, Prabhuji, there are teachings for the new fight when the devotees come to Iskan in order to introduce the position of Krishna visa with with Vishnu. It is said like that. But now you need to take a choice whom you want to serve. You want to serve Golo Krishna, Madhura Krishna, Dwaraka Krishna, Ayodhya Ram, Vaikuntha Narsinga. Whom you want to serve is up to you. There is no forced enforcement upon you that all of you are uh, trained by Iskan. So all of you should only aspire to go to Golak Vrindavan and Saru Krishna only, not like that. Like that Lord says like that, nor any of our Acharyas say like that. What pleases your heart? In what way you want to serve the Lord? You can meditate on that form of the Lord. No problem. No issues. Mm, okay. Lord is always ready to accept your service in whichever, whichever way you want to serve Him. Lord has no conditions that, okay, Okay, from Mumbai, they should be in this rasa. From Delhi, they should be in this rasa. Like that kind of conditions are not there. Okay. It's up to you, up to each and every devotee. How so they means, want to serve uh, the Lord. That's all. Okay, okay. 
Uh, Prabhuji, like I was asking from a perspective, like like uh, we have 12 marjanas, so, so uh, Bhishma being the marjana, so every mm. marjan has their own mood mm. and aspirations. Should ah, we understand yes. like this? Because yes. if we fo- uh, they, it is said in scriptures that we should follow marjana. So Bhishma being the marjana, if we mm. follow marjana as a Bhishma, then it is mm. like his aspiration was four-handed form, which may be Vaikunta. And mm. for us, we may choose whichever uh, marjana which we are inspired with. Is that mm. the understanding we should or how? Following in the footsteps of marjanas means perform bhakti the, the way they are performing. And your object of worship is your choice. No Mahajanas have said that, okay, Prahlad Maharaj will never say that since I am the devotee of Narsingh Dev, all my followers should be only the devotees of Narsingh Dev. Like that, he never says. He only says that surrender the best possible way and worship the whichever deity is pleasing to your heart. It is like that. If that is the case, everyone accepting Prahlad Maharaj as the are their Mahajana, their role model, then they are supposed to become the devotees of Narasimha Dev only. It is not like that. Nowhere Prahlad Maharaj or nowhere any other Acharyas have said like that. They are only showing how to approach the Lord, how to serve the Lord, how to surrender the Lord. Which form of the Lord you chose? That is your free will. Whom you want to serve and in what rasa you want to serve, that is your free will. Hare Krishna also, Prabhuji. Ah, yes, Prabhu. Prabhuji, <clears throat> it is being said that every jiva has his, his uh, original sarupa in spiritual world. Okay. So it may be anything. It, yeah, it can be in any rasa. And that, that sarupa and, and that sarupa is fixed. Yeah. And it that, is also being said that the, those who are associated with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mm. they will get Madhurya Prem and they will get entry in Gola Pundam. So, how to understand this? See, Prabhuji, these, are, I, these sir, are all I subject matters beyond my purview. I cannot, uh, I don't have any answer. As per my little study of Bhagavatam, it is up to, it is between the devotee and the Lord. The way devotee want to serve the Lord, the Lord is eager to facilitate that service. How a devotee want to serve the Lord is up to the devotee's choice. It will be revealed generally at the stage of Asakti. And it becomes strong at the stage of bhava and prema, then Lord will take that devotee to spiritual world and enable that devotee to serve in that particular rasa. So I don't have any information about on this aspect. So devotees can <laughs> check with some senior devotees who are into that subject matter. This is my understanding ends. Okay, Prabhuji, okay, Prabhuji. Yes, that's what I'm saying. In Asakti platform, it will be revealed. That's what NYA says. Ah, yes, Bhagavatam also says, Bhagavatam 9th and 2nd and 3rd and 9th chapter also says about that. 3rd canto. Okay, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Yes, Rajvarishri Prabhu, I am really sorry. I cannot yes. tell you. I, I don't yes, know much so about okay. aspect. So, currently at least, we are like sadhakas. Let us focus on the sadhana. So, what happens in the future, let us see. Wait and see. Why to worry about what is going to happen in the future? What we are supposed to do now, let us focus on that. Yes, Prabhuji. Perfectly yes. fine. And one more thing, Prabhuji. Like ah, in uh, vedabase.com, Dot, uh, I this is a website where for the previous verse it is given as uh, the the supreme personality of Godhead who appears in the mind of devotee by attentive devotion and in mm-hmm. the slides which you have showed the appear word was not there so my question was that uh, at the time of death the Lord personally comes and reminds a devotee or uh, it is that uh, arrangement of external that we chant when we do kirtan uh, when uh, de- See, Prabhuji, whether Lord comes or not, it is not a strict rule that Lord has to come for everyone. That's not a possible. We are here, we are discussing Bhishma's case study. Bhishma had a result that let me have the form of the Lord in front of me so that I can see him. So that I can see him before giving my giving up my body. That's what he desire now. So, uh, 
Let me drink the sweetness of his beauty with my eyes. Let me praise him with my words. And, uh, and let me give up my body. This was the desire of Bishman. Lord was personally present there. So he appeared in front of him. For devotees today, how it happens, I don't know. And so what we understand from Bhagavad Gita Bhagavatam is that Ante Narayana Smruti Enakena Prakarena Mana Krishna Niveshes especially at the time of death somehow or other whether by ourselves or by the help of other devotees surrounding us we need to focus our mind, senses, our words on the form of the Supreme Lord. Whether if we have come to the stage of Smarana, we will be able to see the past tense of the Lord within our mind. The past tense can be visible to our mind. So that kind of possibility is there. Whether Lord comes in person or not, I don't know. For some devotees, he might come in person and take them to the spiritual world. For other devotees, Lord might reveal only his past times. For some devotees, his only reveal is his holy name. The devotees leave their body by chanting Lord's holy names. There are multiple variations, multiple uh, different uh, options are there. But from our side, throughout the life, we need to practice our sadhana so that at the time of death, we will be able to do at least Shravanam. Better than that is Kirtanam. Best is Smaranam. Antakalecha Mameva Smaran Mukta Kalevaram. Those who give up their body by remembering the Supreme Lord's Nama, Rupa, Guna, Leela at the time of death. Ya Prayatasa Madhbhavam Nati Yatra Samshaya. They will come to my spiritual abode. They will become one of my eternal associates. That is the guarantee which Lord Krishna gives. So we need to work hard currently so that we will be able to do one of these three at the time of death. If we can do all the three, first best. So it's like that. Whether Lord comes or whether Lord's form is revealed in the mind, that is from Lord's side. We should worry about what we are supposed to do. We should always focus about what we are supposed to do. We should work on that. From Lord's side, what comes, that is all bonus. One question, Proje, in connection yes. to this. Please don't mind, I am asking multiple questions. Uh, uh, Proje, like uh, this mind, what you said, the Lord is stressing to keep uh, uh, keep your mind attached to him, even uh, uh, at the time of death. But is it, uh, how should we understand? Because the Atma and the subtle body, they are two different things. And the subtle body anyways will be left behind and only Atma will travel back to Godhead. Now, mm -hmm. in this connection, uh, there's, there's nothing of a soul remembering or is it only this mind has constantly has to be reminded throughout our life uh, how the soul will soul will reveal its consciousness yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tajati ante kalevaram whatever mind remembers at the time of death that is what is the destiny for that jiva in the next life if the mind remembers krishna at the time of death the next destiny will be krishna loka if the mind remembers about other places for example for me my home my village my school, college, my office work, etc, 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 I'll again take birth here only. Though it is subtle body, though it is left behind, it will be left behind only if we leave it. If you only think of Krishna, if you only think of the material things, material objects, material people will remain here. So it is like that, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. <coughs> yes, Mataji. Uh, your uh, lecture is very nectarian. That flow of Bhagavatam is very good. And uh, let us avoid such uh, unwanted questions. You continue only Bhagavatam. Such questions they can ask at the end of the class. What happens? After, let us uh, uh, concentrate on our study of Bhagavatam now. Okay, okay, Mataji. Thank you. <laughs> Your flow is very nice nectarian and they stop that in between so that. It's okay, it's okay. The devotees have some questions, so we need to encourage them. No problem. Sometimes. So, Bhishma has expressed his desire 
that he wanted to see the form of the supreme lord which is mukambuja ullasat the brightly shining face aruna lochnat red eyes and uh, chaturbhujam consisting of four hands and uh, what is this dhyanapatas that should be the object of one's meditation so it's like that or uh, with all the of course that lord is standing in front of him bishma is very happy though i am a great dev- i am not a great devotee since all of you pandavas are great devotees because i am somehow related to you the lord has come to me and standing in front of me this is my greatness now i am ready to give up my body so like that bishma uh settled up his mind to give up his body because krishna has come now so like that now sudha gosam is taking on yudhishthirastadakarnya shayanam shara panjare apurchad vividan dharman rishinam chanu shrunvatam sudha gosam is said maharaj yudhishthir after hearing bishma dev speak in that appealing tone asked him in the presence of all the great rishis about the essential principles of various religious duties hmm. now subject matter comes yudhishthira comes to battlefield of kurukshetra of course to see bhishma also is there everything is there but primarily to relieve the pain that he was going through because he was thinking that i am the cause of the destruction of the entire army in the battlefield of kurukshetra for fulfilling my desire to become the king of the astinapur so now sudha gosam says that yudhishthira hearing what bhishma had said then asked bhishma who is lying on the bed of arrows shayanam shara panjare so he was actually lying on the bed of arrows about various dharmas while the sages were listening so somebody might question how can you ask he is going through intense pain being situated on the pe uh, sh- sharapanjara the bed of arrows it is not even bed of arrows actually the arrows were piercing through bhishma and half the arrow is behind bhishma and that uh, those arrows bhishma was actually lying flat it was not that a bed is made by arrows and he was sleeping on top of the arrows not like that the arrows are pierced to the body of the bhishma and he was lying so currently innumerable number of arrows are piercing through his body and he is going through intense pain and somebody might ask question how can you ask him right now anything but uh, for yudhishthir maharaj there is no other well wisher than bhishma and for bhishma there is no intimate uh, relative or there is no hope other than uh, yudhishthir because bhishma living till now till date in spite of tolerating so many difficulties so many insults so many injustices just to see yudhishthir to be the king of astinapur so that as a mahajan as a devotee he can make sure that the people in the entire kingdom are sure to be in the right path of going back home back to godhead only if yudhishthir is king that is his desire for that purpose he was going through all these difficulties he does not mind speaking to yudhishthir now to convince him to be the king for the time to come but people might ask that question but propad writes in the purport that so devotees in whatever condition they may be they are always ready to impart the spiritual instructions so something like that yudhishthir anxious about who would free him from delusion began to ask bhishma who was lying on the bed of arrows though one should not ask questions when bhishma is in such a situation because he had no alternative he asked because yudhishthir had no other alternative he asked if not for bhishma if anybody else in the entire universe had told any scriptural injunctions yudhishthir would not have been convinced only bhishma is the right authority who can convince yudhishthir of course it is by the request of bhishma only pandavas fought the battle pandavas won the battle pandavas want to re uh, 
established themselves as the kings of the Astinapur. That was only Bhishma's desire. And now, how the things have manifested, how the things have uh, happened. So Yudhishthira was going through lamentation. He, want, he wants to get Bhishma's uh, uh, approval. So, upon everything. So, it should not be like, only for my sense gratification, I have killed so many people and I have become king and I will go, I will go, I will be enjoying in the future. It should not be that kind of situation. So Bhishma is sought after for the proper judgment for Yudhishthir or by the Yudhishthir. So that was the whole situation. Only Bhishma can pacify Yudhishthir, only Bhishma can give assurance that he is doing proper thing. He is not going in uh, ill means, going through ill means like that. So, this is the whole idea. Purusha Swabhava Vihitan Yata Varanam Yata Ashramam Vairagya Ragopa Vairagya Ragopi Dhyanam Sorry, Vairagya Ragopa Ragopa Dibhyam Amna Tobaya Lakshanam <clears throat> At Maharaja Yudhishthira's enquiry, Bhishma Deva first defined all the classifications of caste and orders of life in terms of the individual's qualification. Then he systematically, in twofold divisions, described counteraction by detachment and interaction by attachment. If you see in Mahabharat, after the battle of Kurukshetra, there are two huge parvas. Shanti Parva and Anushasana Parva. So, Bhishma speaks to Yudhishthir more than 30 days. Some say 34 days, some say 36 days, etc. But whatever it is, more than a month. Continuously, every day, morning to evening, morning to morning to evening, on various topics. And that is recorded in two Parvas, two long Parvas. Anushasana Parva and Shanti Parva of Mahabharata, etc. So, that is being said in a couple of verses here. So, Bhagavatam does not go into details. But in essence, what is all told by Bhishma unto Yudhishthir? So, in order to rule the kingdom in a proper order in the future. So, that is being indicated here in a couple of verses. Purusha Sabhava Vihitam Yata Varanam Yata Ashramam Bhishma described various dharmas suitable for various men according to their psychophysical natures. Purusha Swabhava Vihitam. According to one's psychophysical nature, one's Varna and Ashrama has been ascertained. So, according to one's Varna and Ashrama, what are the duties they are supposed to do? All those duties were told by Bhishma unto Yudhishthir. According to one's Varna and Ashrama, uh, which have the qualities of renunciation and enjoyment, described according to a person's detachment or attachment. The activities of various Varnas and various Ashramas consisting of activities of attachment, activities of detachment, which results in the activities of attachment results in enjoyment, the activities of detachment results in renunciation. So different Varnas and different Ashramas have different, different kinds of activities and they have these particular natures. All these things are very elaborately spoken by Bhishma onto Vidhishtu Maharaj. Basically, it's telling that after becoming king, you need to establish proper Varnashtama system so that people will perform the duties according to their Varna, according to their Ashrama, more than that, according to their individual natures. Purusha Swa Bhava Vihitan. So, it is like that. It is the responsibility of a king to maintain the Varnash system properly so that people in the kingdom can perform their respective activities pleasingly, wholeheartedly, without grudging, etc. etc. So thus Bhishma described the dharmas for humans according to their individual natures. Spurusha Swabhava Vihitan. Yata Varna means being qualified by one's Varna. Yata ashrama means being qualified by one's ashrama. The ashramas have qualification of renunciation and the qualification of enjoyment, which are described respectively according to the qualification of detachment or attachment. 
the activities of some ashramas encourage detachment the activities of some ashramas encourage attachment and also some activities of some ashramas allow some kind of enjoyment the activities of other ashramas only prescribe renunciation or detachment so they are belonging to particular ashramas particular varnas everything is supposed to be understood properly and then followed thus it is a rule that all the ashramas such as brahmachari need not be undertaken one after the other by all brahmanas so <clears throat> the tradition says that a brahmana supposed to go through four ashramas one after the other in general initially they need to go to gurukul study and then they come home get married take care of the household responsibilities then take on to vanaprastha order after 50 then eventually after some time uh, take on to sanyas so that is the general progression for general brahmanas and for kshatriyas go to gurukul follow brahmacharya strictly study the vedas learn the archery come home become the king rule the kingdom and renounce kingdom give to the next uh, his son and then go to forest perform vanaprastha duties and attain perfection kshatriyas are not allowed to take sanyas and then vaishyas go to gurukul follow brahmacharya study nicely under the guru's shelter come home get marry lead life uh, do some uh, agriculture cow production trading business etc etc and live life they vaishyas are not allowed to take to vanaprastha sanyasa etc etc and shudras uh, they don't have the privilege to go to gurukul to study the vedas so of course there are other set of schools for uh, shudras to learn their occupational duties etc etc but not to study the vedas the vedic study is not generally allowed for the shudras in the vedic uh, tradition so that this is how the four uh, uh, varnas go through the four ashramas in a discrete level so the shudras they don't have to go through brahmacharya vanaprastha or sanyasa so just go to gurukul or uh, nearby gurukul study all their according their occupations and then come home and uh, get marry and continue they need to follow all the grass order duties grass ashrama duties not brahmacharya vanaprastha or sanyasa and uh, vaishyas they supposed to go through brahmacharya and then grass and then they live like grass till the end of life and kshatriya is supposed to go to brahmacharya then grasa then vanaprastha brahmana is supposed to go through brahmacharya grasa vanaprastha sanyasi so generally but sometimes if there are some brahmanas who are uh, who have the temperament of detachment who have the temperament of renunciation after studying gurukul after studying in the gurukul if they don't want to enter into family household order gross ashram they can stay back in the guru ashram only and continue as an aishtik brahmachari and after some time they can become sanyasis something that that allowance is there for uh, brahmanas even for some kshatriyas also if they want to remain in the ashram of guru uh, guru and uh, they continue as brahmacharis then eventually become vanaprastha and then give up the body etc that is there so thus it it is a rule that all the ashramas such as brahmachari uh, need not undertaken one after the other by all ashram by all brahmanas if a brahmana boy when he goes to gurukul not necessarily that he has to come back if they want to stay they can stay in general they will come back get marry and then go through other subsequent ashramas one after the other but some exceptions they can stay back in the gurukul and continue as uh, brahmachari and then become eventually become sanyasi if they have constant renunciation they can become sanyasis and if they have constant attachment they become grossas so while brahmachari uh, brahmachari is going on the students are uh, of course uh, uh, they they have that uh, cultivation of that particular object that okay after my studies i'll go back get marry and uh, settle i mean uh, do my household duties etc etc so for such kind of brahmachari is no where it is uh, said that they need to stay back in the gurukul and continue as an aishtik brahmachari not like that if they are interested to get guru become grossas 
after their studies are over, they are honorably sent back and they become home and get grasses, etc. Something like that. Because they have constant attachment. Uh, and if those who have constant renunciation, they who are not interested to come home and become enter into gross ashram, they can stay back in Gurukul and continue as a brahmachari and then eventually become sannyasi. So this is how the varnashram duties are uh, prescribed in our Vedic tradition and which is supposed to be followed by all the people in general, etc. etc. So it is like that. So here Bhishma himself is a classic case. So he studied under Gurukul very nicely, came home. Of course, that time he did not have any renunciation thoughts. So he would have married if not for uh, Satyavati, Satyavati's father's agreement. So because Satyavati's father had a condition that, okay, you are the prince, crown prince. If my daughter is married to your father and uh, what will happen to my daughter's children? Then he said that I will marry, I will not become the king. So then he said, if you know, you may not become king, but your sons might become king, might want to become king. Then he said, I will not marry. So that is a different condition. So he followed the entire life as Nashtika Brahmacharya in spite of staying in the royal court. But generally, they can such kind of Nashtika Brahmacharya stay in the ashram only. So these are some prescribed rules for different Varnas and different Ashramas. So Prabhupada also talks about all these rules and regulations for different Varnas and Ashramas elaborately in the purport. Here in a gist we have presented in the paragraph. So basically he talked about the importance of Varanas and Ashramas, the various cultivation of various activities and uh, according to one psychophysical nature. So it is king's responsibility to make sure that things are happening properly. So Bhishma spoke about all these things elaborately. And then next Bhishma talks about various other uh, factors, important factors. Dana Dharman, Raja Dharman, Moksha Dharman, Vibhagasha, Stri Dharman, Bhagavad Dharman, Bhagavad Dharman, Samasa Vyasa Yogata. He then explained by divisions, hmm. acts of clarity, the pragmatic activities of a king and activities for salvation. Then he described the duties of women and devotees both briefly and extensively. Yeah. Then Bhishma Deva spoke about within the Varnashma, what kind of activity they are supposed to do. So he prescribed the duties of charity for grasas. Grasas are supposed to do charity always. The duties of the king, Raja Dharma, and the duties for attaining liberation. What a Vanaprasa or Sannyas is supposed to do, or how a grasa should conduct while staying at home in order to preparing to attain moksha. So etc. Like that. And the duties of women. So as women staying at home, how they should conduct in cooperation with their husbands, in their, with their family members, etc. And then finally, Bhagavad Dharma, Bhakti Yoga. In brief and in detail, Samasa, Vyasa, Yogata. Samasa means in brief, Vyasa means elaborately. So he spoke about all these duties in brief and elaborately also. So Bhishma spoke about all these things which are necessary uh, in the kingdom. So generally kingdom means all the grossars are there. Grosses are generally char char charitably disposed. So, Yata Raja Tata Praja. If king is charitably disposed, people also become charitably disposed. So, king has to set an example by himself. And also, what are the other duties of a Raja? Uh, administration duties, etc., etc. And people in general, while staying at home, also they need to perform all the activities which are ultimately take them to moksha. So, how they are supposed to do all their duties which will take them to moksha? That is also need to be established. And what are the duties of the women at home? in different aspects like the wife like the mother like the grandmother etc etc and bhagavad dharma about bhakti the different aspects of bhakti as mataji was asking about vishnu sahasranama and also one more section narayanam i think so they might be coming under this section of bhagavad dharma where bhishma was talking about bhagavad dharma how people in general are supposed to practice bhakti so in that section might vishnu sahasranama might be included so thus bhishma speaks Within Varnashrama, more particularly he described dana or charity, the king's duties and the duties for attain liberation, women's duties and finally the duties of the Lord, Bhagavad Dharma, the duties one owes toward the Supreme Lord. 
This refers to the angas of bhakti. Bhagavad Dharma refers to the angas of bhakti. That is uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Marchanam, Mandanam, Dasan, Sakhi, Matmim. That such kind of activities. It is placed at the end to indicate that it is the best. He described them in brief and in detail. So Bhagavad Dharma kept at the end because after following all these things, one should ultimately come to this point of Bhagavad Dharma. In the sense, while doing all the other dharmas also, one should keep Bhagavad Dharma in focus and do everything in such a way that one's life is completely dedicated to Bhagavad Dharma and eventually attain the lotus feet of Bhagavan. So that was the whole purpose of following Varnashtama Dharma and performing all the other duties. If without Bhagavad Dharma, performing all other things are like Shramayevahi Kevalam as we studied in the beginning of the Bhagavatam. In the second chapter it was mentioned that uh, so we may be doing so many duties in this world but if all those duties are not taking us towards uh, Supreme Lord, all are simply Shramayevahi Kevalam only. So Atapumbir Dveshreshta Varnashtam Vipagasha Swamishtita Dharmasya Samsiddhim Labhati. So it's like that. So basically we have to perform all our duties for the purpose of worshipping the Supreme Lord. So if it is not for worshipping the Supreme Lord, there is no point in uh, performing all our uh, duties. Samsiddhim Aritoshnam. Only for the purpose of worshipping Lord Hari. So that is what is being indicated here also. All the Varnas and Ashtamas perform their duties ultimately to come to Haritoshnam, render Bhagavad Dharma. Otherwise, Dharma Swa Anushtrita Pumsha Vishwakshena Katasuya Na Utpadaya Tidiradim Shramayevahi Kevalam. If all our Varnasham duties are not uh, uh, encouraging us taking shelter of Lord's Lotus Feet or not developing attachment towards Bhagavan and Bhakti, all those activities are all Shramayevahi Kevalam. So, both ways they are there. Activities only. But if the activities are not producing bhakti, they are all shramaya vaikyavalam. If the activities are producing bhakti and they are all you, they are all become devotional activities. So, it's like that. That will lead us to uh, going back home, back to Prabhuji, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhuji, previous in the previous verse, the uh, 26th, uh, you said that uh, those uh, who went to Gurukul, uh, uh, they may not back to Gurukul, uh, from Gurukul. Uh, they remain stay at uh, Gurukul only. And so, uh, Prabhuji, in that case, how, Madhav, what is the destiny of the, the uh, that uh, type of people? Uh, why? Because, Prabhuji, oh, Prabhuji, dest order, destiny, uh, does not come, dest destiny does not come based on one's ashrama. Destiny comes okay. based on one's sadhana. Wherever mm. one is comfortable to practice their sadhana, they are allowed to mm. practice mm. and sadhana will determine the sadhya, not the ashrama itself. Yeah. Ashrama okay. is only a facility where when one can practice their sadhana, that's all. Actually, वो, वो, actually, वो ही मैं समझ नहीं पा रहा था वो वर्णन सिस्टम में आ, है but आ, जो गुरुकुल में रह करके हमेशा मतलब जो आगे का पीढ़ी के लिए जो भी अपना जीव, जीवन सैक्रिफाइस कर रहा है उनका क्या डिस्टिनी होगा मतलब वो बक्सी के बारे में प्रचार करते हैं तो वो तो अलग बात है बट वो बाकी चीजें करते हैं जो कुरुकुल में तो हर चीज का हर चीज का टीचिंग होता है प्रभुजी उनका क्या डिस्टिनी होगा प्रभुजी एज ए टीचर वन मे टीच एवरीथिंग बट एज ए पर्सन एवरीवन हैज देयर ओन साधना टीचिंग इज ए ऑक्यूपेशन बट साधना इज साधना ओनली Are you getting? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Okay, mm. Prabhuji. See, if a person has the temperament being a brahmachari, can stay in the Gurukul, continue as a brahmachari, he can become eventually the teacher also, he can teach many people. But while doing all the other responsibilities of that ashrama, one continues to practice one sadhana. 
sadhana determines our destiny not the duties of ashram alone yes sir hmm. sadhana is directly proportion to our destiny yeah and the duties of ashram also can award some result only within the purview of the material world for example if one follows the brahmacharya grahasa and vanaprastha duties properly they are sent to mahar loka after death as a vanaprastha if some after okay. going to gurukul continue to stay in the gurukul only as a naistik brahmachari and they are allowed to go to brahma loka this bhagavatam 70 canto says so okay. it's like that brahma loka prabhu ah yes they are allowed to go to brahma they are promoted to brahma loka even a householder when they perform their household grossa dharma properly they will be promoted to swarga loka so they are there just by performing varnashrama duties properly they will be elevated to higher orders that is all there but when we are talking from the point of view of going beyond material world attaining moksha or attaining go vaikuntha for that one need to practice properly ajnana uh, ashtanga and bhakti without uh, that sadhanas it cannot be possible just the duties itself will not be accomplished one will not accomplish uh, moksha or vaikuntha so it's like that thank you prabhu so basically these are all various duties that uh, a citizen supposed to follow a king supposed to oversee that everyone is following that's why bishma is speaking about all these things everyone need to follow dana dharma the kings need to follow raja dharma and the people in general need to perform their duties in such a way that all these duties are dotailing towards moksha attaining moksha and for a devotees bhagavad dharma etc etc so all these things need to be provided facilitated so that people practice dharmartha kama moksham sha sahopayan yatamune nana kyane itihaseshu varnayam asatatva ved then he described the occupational duties of different orders and stages of life <coughs> citing instances from history for he was himself will well acquainted with the truth hari krishna so o shavnaka bishma who is the knower of the truth tattva vid accurately described dharma artha kama and moksha he talked about what do you mean by dharma what do you mean by artha what is the what is the meaning of kama what is the meaning of moksha how to attain them etc etc along with their methods saha upayan along with the different uh, methods how to accomplish them i using various stories and histories of as proof so not only talked about them philosophically he also quoted so many case studies okay, these people followed this dharma like this these people performed this so and so activities so got this artha so these people followed so and so activities so that this will to fulfill this kind of kama and people perform this kind of duties to attain moksha so like there are so many examples so many stories are quoted if you read mahabharat this section uh anushasana parva and shanti parva so many quotes so many stories so many stories even there are story of dharma vyada which is very famous all over india people speak about that without understanding what is the proper import about it so but the story also comes in the section only about the description of dharma how one should perform one dharma in that regard that story is being spoken so etc like this quoting various stories historical uh, evidences historical uh, case studies bishma explained what is the meaning of dharmartha kama moksha and how to attain them the means of attaining dharmartha kama moksha etc all the dharmas described can be placed ultimately in four categories of artha dharma kama and moksha bishma mentions these categories in order to strengthen what has been said so whatever he has said till now that uh, dana dharma raja dharma sri dharma moksha dharma and bhagavad dharma everything can be put into proper order can be called as dharma artha kama moksha etc etc upaya means 
the means of attaining dharmartha kama moksha yata means accurately he proved what he has said by showing instances in the history by quoting so many historical uh, stories so bhishma actually gave evidence about what he is speaking so for those detail, for more details devotees can uh, read mahabharat shanti parva anushasan parva you can get more details about all this particular uh, three verses what exactly bhishma spoke to yudhishthir that can be understood from that section of mahabharat dharmam pravadastasya sakala pratyupastita yo yoginas chandamrutyor vanchitas tutrayana while bhishma dev was bhishma dev describing describing occupational duties the sun's course ran into the northern hemisphere this period is described by mystics who died at their will as bhishma deva was speaking about all these various subject matters about the duties of four varnas four ashramas the duties of various personalities and various uh, accomplishments dharmartha kama moksha the time has passed so quickly so quickly and uttrayana started the time of uttrayana which was desired by bhishma bhishma was waiting for that eventually actually who had finished speaking on dharma and could die when he chose then arrived chanda mrutyu means bhishma had that blessing from his father his father when bhishma took the vow that i will never marry and uh, then understanding what kind of sacrifice bhishma did his father who had that blessing that he can die at will whenever he wants he gave the same blessing to his own son bhishma also so that bhishma can die whenever he wants so if bhishma wanted long back only could have left his body but he stayed till now just to see that yudhishthir becomes the king now since yudhishthir became king without any opposition so he can uh, free to give up his uh, body so after clarifying all the doubts and inquiries of yudhishthir maharaj so now yudhishthir maharaj is completely pacified and is ready to become the king and ready to take care of the kingdom uttarayana came and bhishma is uh, getting ready to give up his body so those people who are interested in some calculations some technical details so <clears throat> geeta jayanti that comes on uh, ekadashi we call it as moksha da ekadashi which generally comes in the month of marga shirsha in the shukla paksha shukla paksha means bright fortnight so that was the day lord krishna spoke bhagavad gita to one or two days later mahabharat battle began on chaturdashi or uh, since it is shukla paksha and pournami some say it is on pournami some say it is on chaturdashi but whatever it is i think most probably it is began on pournami only ekadashi krishna spoke gita and pournami mahabharat battle began and on the 13th day or 14th day all of you if you remember uh, arjuna took a vow to kill jayadrath before sun setting so it was great army he has to cross through all the army he traveled for 40 yojanas one yojana is 13 kilometers 13 into 40 like 520 kilometers he has to travel one day only so krishna driving his chariot arjuna travel for 520 kilometers on one day not just travel simple traveling can be do any anyone can do but fighting with so many great great warriors on the on the war field killing so many warriors crossing beyond them so many troops after traveling for 40 yojanas it seemed that it became dark everywhere and duryodhana and his party jayadrath they thought that it is already sunset ho gaya and my dear arjuna enter into fire as you promised then after some time again sun appeared everything became bright arjuna killed jayadrath so that day actually solar eclipse happened because it was amavasya so the battle began on pournami geeta was spoken on ekadashi and jayadratha was killed on amavasya when there was solar eclipse in the evening late evening so then uh, of course few days before that on the 10th day bhishma was uh, fell down on the bed of arrows and then mahabharata battle completed 
and the pandavas and what we have studied in the previous chapter 7 chapter that um, in the night ashwatthama killed all the remaining warriors uh, Sh shikandi jam and drishtadumna and five upa pandavas they were all killed and uh, ashwatthama punished and the pandavas uh, performed uh, the final rites to all the deceased warriors and then uh, yudhishthir was coronated and they came to battlefield of kurukshetra and bhishma spoke elaborately to elaborately on to yudhishthir maharaj and by the way makar sankranti came which all of us have celebrated yesterday the uttarayana refers to makar sankranti so bhishma spoke till yesterday till the day of makar sankranti and then he stopped speaking to yudhishthir after makar sankranti of course while he was speaking already makar sankranti came we can say maybe a day or two went ahead but then only looking at lord krishna he offered his prayers unto lord krishna very elaborately and eventually on one auspicious day in the month of maga during krishna shukla paksha on the day of ashtami bhishma left his body that is called as bhishma ashtami very soon we are going to have this bhishma ashtami festival coming in the month of february so we had a gita jayanti in the month of december and bhishma ashtami is going to come in the month of uh, february so bhishma ashtami is on february 8th for those who are interested so february 8th was bhishma ashtami and in the month of december uh, geeta jayanti was december 14th december 14 to february 8 how many days december 31 january be 31 60 minus 6 plus 2 i think 14 to 8 60 minus 16 54 plus 1 plus 1 56 days so from the time geeta was spoken to the time bhishma left his body so there are 56 days so out of which geeta was spoken on ekadashi two days later mahabharat battle began 10 days later bhishma fell so out of 56 12 days you remove 48 days bhishma was there on the bed of arrows out of 48 days he was said that he, was, he spoke 34 days about some say 34 some say 36 but whatever it is that many days continuously lying on the bed of arrows bhishma spoke to yudhishthir maharaj about all this varnashtama dharma dan dharma raj dharma sri dharma putra dharma dit dharma dar dharma bhagavad dharma everything moksha dharma so this is what bhishma so it is like that why would krishna allowed bhishma even though in that uh, a very difficult situation to speak so elaborately because bhishma studied for 250 long years when bhishma was living giving up his body he was 480 years old totally studied for 3 250 to 300 years in various schools when he was about to leave his body he was 480 years old bhishma studied uh, 50 years from brahaspati about four vedas 50 years from parashuram about the vedas and other uh, vedic literatures and 50 years from prad parashuram about various archery and again he studied from brahaspati another 50 years from various vedic literatures again from parashuram another 50 years about archery etc etc like that and he spent some time with ganga sometimes with shantanu he learned from them also and other family gurus another 50 years like that from uh, mother ganga shantanu and other family gurus 50 years from brahaspati 100 years from lord parashuram 150 years so total 300 years he studied so since he had studied for 300 years so that education should not go waste so krishna allowed bhishma to speak for long hours or many days so that whatever he had studied whatever he had followed in his entire life is taught to all of us through the medium of yudhishthir 
and all his teachings are recorded in mahabharat and of all of us are open to read mahabharata and study and understand whatever bhishma spoke to yudhishthir so this was about bhishma so now the devotee generally have a question so bhishma is a pure devotee why would he wait for uh, uttarayana time period etc etc so bhagavad lord krishna also tells set up sets up a particular process in bhagavad gita in the 8th chapter at the end krishna says that agnir jyoti rahak shukla shanmasa uttarayanam tatra prayata gachanti brahma brahma vidojana the nors of brahman the gnanis brahma vida brahma vadis who depart on the path of fire and light the waxing fortnight and the northern progress of the sun attain brahman so the gnanis who are practitioners of nishkama karma yoga and then eventually gnana in following the path of sun they attain brahman so this is a path recommended for the gnanis who are supposed to give up their body during uttarayana so following the path of sun they go towards north and then eventually they pierce into the seven layers of the universe they attain brahman on the other hand those who follow the path of darkness <coughs> dumo ratri tatha krishna shanmasa dakshinayanam tatra chandra masam jyotir yogi prapya nivartate those who depart uh, following the path of smoke the night the waxing fortnight the southern course of the sun dakshinayana attaining the swarga loka or pitru loka the karma yogis are written they go all the way up to pitru loka or swarga loka after enjoying there sufficiently they return to bharata varsha once again so this is the path of darkness the previous one is the path of light so like this the supreme lord had established these two paths at the beginning of the creation will and they will continue till the end of the annihilation shukla krishne gati yete jagata shashvate mate ekaya yati anavrittim annaya vartate puna the two paths the path of light and the path of darkness are considered eternal in this material world by the phone ah are kertido tetta oru mulaga by following the path of light by following the path of light one does not return because they attain brahman so they does not return and by following the path of darkness they go to chandra loka or swarga loka and after enjoying there for some time they return so these are the bona fide paths prescribed by the vedic literatures followed by the vedic sages in the past those who are following sakama karma duties they by practicing the following the path of darkness they go to swarga loka or uh, chandra loka enjoy their come back but those who are following nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga and ashtanga yoga they giving up their body during uttarayana punya kala following the path of sun they eventually attain brahma sayujya so that is the understanding so from the point of view of mahabharat bhishma is establishing an example of nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga and tapasvi is a great tapasvi performed tapasvi for the entire life so in order to establish the proper conduct of a nishkama karma yogi gnana yogi and tapasvi and also ashtanga yogi he is setting the example he is also following the proper code of conduct that giving up the body during uttarayana punya kala because that time if they give up the body following the path of sun they will attain moksha from that point of view not that he as a mahajani as a pure devotee no need to worry about uttarayana dakshina etc etc but from the mahabharata point of view which actually proclaims dharmartha kama moksha in order to attain moksha the practitioners of nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga they need to wait for uttarayana punya kala and give up the body so that they will attain moksha properly and instantly so like that we should see this so then so uttarayana started that means makar sankranti already went behind then what did he do are krishna prabhu ah uh, yes prabhu Uh, Prabhuji, you mentioned that on Bhishma Shme, uh, uh, Bhishma they departed, but in uh, Kartik Rath we do celebrate Bhishma Panchak. So, what is then Bhishma Panchak? That I don't know, Prabhuji. 
you ask some senior devotees i never followed i don't know means not that i don't know it but uh, <clears throat> there are so many things i have heard out about it so i don't want to comment on them so devotees follow bishma panchak that is very good that is fine but uh, i don't know what exactly it is okay तदोपसंहृत्य गिरसहर्षनेमुक्त मन आदिपुरषे कृष्ण लसत्तपते चुर्भुजे पुरा स्थित पुरा स्थित मी सुपुरस्तुते मीलितृग्यधारय That there are upon that man who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings, and who fought on thousand of battlefields and protected thousand of men, stopped speaking and, being completely free from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the original personality of God, as Sri Krishna, who stood yeah. before him, four-headed, dressed in yellow garment that glitter and shine. Hmm. Since Lord Krishna was standing before him as he desired, after speaking all these things elaborately for more than thirty days, thirty-four, thirty-six, whatever it is, no Bhishma stopped speaking. At that time, withdrawing his words from other subjects, now he is no more talking about dharma, the kama moksha, not talking about the raja dharma, sri dharma, putra dharma, pitta dharma, etc., etc., not talking anything. With eyes wide open, amili tadrik, matlab. Milita means to blinking without blinking the eyes. Bhishma, the leader of thousands of chariots, counteract concentrated himself, free of all material attachment, upon Krishna alone, with the original person, Adi Purusha, dressed in shining yellow garments, lassat pita pate, the Lord wearing the yellow pita ambar garments with four arms, chetur bhuje, because he desired that. I want to see the Lord in four hands when I am about to leave my body. So Lord manifested His four arms now, standing before Him. Purushastite, Lord Krishna was standing personally before. It is of course He was there for the last thirty-five days, but now it is the right time for Bhishma to depart from this material world. Krishna manifested His four-armed form and standing exactly in front of Him, and Bhishma was just gazing at Krishna, and then now. He stopped speaking all other, the worldly subject subject matters. Sahasrani refers to Bhishma, who led or protected a thousand chariots gathered for battle. Another version as Sahasrani, which means possessing a thousand treasures. Bhishma possesses thousand kinds of treasures, treasures from the point of view of knowledge, not from the point of view of wealth. He had possessed knowledge of thousands thousands varieties of knowledges, something like that. withdrawing his words from other subjects with eyes completely open without blinking he completely absorbed his mind in lord krishna he was gazing at lord krishna his mind is completely absorbed in lord krishna the four hand form of lord krishna and then he is going to say few words what is being spoken in the upcoming verses so here in this purport shri prabhupada quotes all the translation from the 8th chapter verse number 5 to 15 So basically, what should be one's consciousness at the time of death? That is being established in chapter eight of Bhagavad Gita. So we will not discuss everything, but one verse we'll see. Anta kala cha mamevas maran muktva kalevaram ya parayi samadbavam ya ti naati atar samshya. He who leaves his body while knowing me in truth attains a nature similar to mine. So one who Studied and understood about Krishna throughout one's life, and with that understanding, with that knowledge, with that realization, one can think of Lord Krishna at the time of death. One who thinks of Lord Krishna at the time of death will attain Lord Krishna without any doubt. Na asti atra samshya kindly do not have any doubt about this attaining me. Not bhavam refers to they will come to my spiritual abode. They will become my eternal associates. They will become one of the Vaikuntha Vasis. something like that 
one of the residents of the spiritual world so of course the remaining verses in that section also establish the same concept they elaborate on this particular concept विशुद्धया धारणया विशुद्धया धारणया अतौ शुभस अथा शुभस तदीक्षणैवासु गतायु गता गतायु दशरमा निवृत्त सर्वे इंद्रिय वृत्ति विभ्रमस तुष्टा तुष्टा वजन्यम विसृजा जनार्दनम by pure meditation looking at lord krishna shri krishna be at once was freed from all material inauspiciousness and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds thus all the external activities of his senses at once stopped and he prayed transcendently to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body externally stopped speaking to yudhishthir and he was gazing at krishna and he was thinking about krishna in his mind so now going deeper into his mind what's happening within his mind that is mentioned in this verse vishuddhaya dharanaya atashubas as bhishma free of all inauspicious atha ashuba now he has no more inauspiciousness in his personality till date being the Uh, protector of the kauravas he always filled with lot of inauspiciousness but now he has given up all his duties he has given up all his material responsibility everything is done whatever he is supposed to do everything is completed he even to the extent that he has transmitted all the knowledge that he has studied from various personalities over 300 years to yudhishthir maharaj now there is no material responsibility left behind for him so all ashuba has been all nasmish has been taken away and by his pure concentration vishuddhaya dharanaya free of physical fatigue from fighting now he is completely freed from the pain of the physical body though he is his body is pierced with so many arrows but he is now no more identifying with the body so he is no more experiencing the body pains and free of drawing senses so till now his senses are engaged in various activities his uh, mouth is speaking eyes are glancing at this thing etc etc so many other things the material subject matters but now all his senses stopped their activities they are simply focused on krishna all these things are happening by lord krishna's glance of mercy janyam visruja do as he was about to leave his body he began to praise krishna so in one sense giving up all material identity means he already left his material body though he is there in the body but he is not identifying with the body that's how he is not going through pain or so he is not all disturbed by the pain of the body which is pierced by so many arrows in one sense he already left his body but from our point of view now he is ready to give up the body at that point of time gazing at lord krishna's chaturbhuja form thinking about lord krishna's transcendental nature and transcendental compassion bhishma began to offer his praises to krishna this is one of the thing he said i want to see your form i want to say what is there in my mind and then i i want to give up my body so one thing is done or second thing is going to start tadikshaya means by the glance of mercy of krishna vibhrama means the various wanderings of the senses till now the senses are engaged in various activities from the beginning till now till the battle of mahabharat janyam means the material body or the material world very soon is going to give up the material body and material world both together so now bhishma is going to express what is there in the core of his heart unto lord krishna this is his second desire he offers so many prayers 10 to 12 prayers very nice prayers very philosophical prayers so we'll discuss few prayers today and few more prayers in the next sunday hari krishna till now it is clear all of you are able to follow
yes prabhu yes prabhu okay thank you yes, yes, questions we can ask at the end of the class or how prabhu ji yeah yeah if you have some questions we'll take at the end no problem yes prabhu okay. if something is not clear corresponding to the current verses which we are discussing you can ask in between okay so general questions you can ask at the end mm. yeah yeah shri bhishma uvacha iti mati rupa kalpita vitrishna bhagavati shashvata pungave vibhumni swasukam upagate kvachit vihartum prakritim upeyushi yad bhava pravaha Bhishma Deva said, "Let me now invest my thinking, feeling, and willing, which were so long engaged in different subjects and occupational duties, in the all-powerful Lord Shri Krishna. He is always self-satisfied, but sometimes, being the leader of the devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world, although from him only the material world is created." Yeah, if all of you remember. In the previous chapter, we saw Kunti Maharani offered her heartfelt prayers, prayers unto Lord Krishna. So here, Bhishma Devi is also offering his heartfelt prayers to Lord Krishna. They establish Siddhanta, they establish compassion mood of Krishna, and eventually they express their desire. So this is the this is how the prayers go on. So in the first first couple of verses, Bhishma establishes the Siddhanta of Lord Krishna. then compassionate nature of lord krishna and then finally he is longing desire he will express something like that so here bhishma is saying that iti matir kalpit upakalpita vitrishna bhagavati shashvata pongave ubhumi this is siddhanta it talks about the position of lord krishna at the end of my life i let me offer my thoughts iti matir matir refers to my thoughts whatever thoughts i have in my mind let me offer all the thoughts unto you my dear krishna who are you you are bhagavan filled with six opulences six qualities bhagavati why would bhishma has to offer what is there in his mind unto krishna because krishna is bhagavan filled with six qualities aishwaryasya samagrasya viryasya ashyasya jnana vairagya chaiva sannam magaitingana all the six opulences are there in him And he shows that Bungave is the best among the Edus, is the king of the Edus, is the lord of the Edus. So in that way, and is Vibhuni, <coughs> he is superior to all other forms of the lord. <coughs> Somebody might say that okay, he is Bhagavan, he is best among the Edus, but there is Narayana also. Why not Narayana? Why Krishna? Then he said that he is even superior to Narayana also. He is superior to all other forms of the. vaikuntha avataras and then absorbed in bliss with your associates swa sukham upagate the lord is always experiencing bliss in the association of his wonderful devotees and he as a pastime vihartum as a vihar as a playful pastime <coughs> in the form of the purusha avataras sometimes access maya by your glance which produces the material world as a pleasureful activity as a matter of some vihar some pastime you accept maya and glance upon her by which you create unlimited material universes your main activity is to deal with your devotees and give happiness to them and experience happiness for yourself but one of the side activity is glancing upon prakriti and creating material universes and maintaining them so this is siddhanta about supreme lord he says that at the end of my life my thoughts are offered to the lord since my master has come to me at the time of my passing away under the influence of his mercy i must give him a gift so when a guest comes to our home we are always eager to give some gift to them now bishma is saying that at the time of death krishna personally came to me i need to offer him a gift what gift i can give i don't have anything to give him there is nothing suitable in this abode of possessiveness and ego ego refers to aham possessiveness refers to mamethi aham mamethi 
द एंटर मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज फिल्ड विथ अहम ममेती कॉन्सेप्ट इन दिस अहम ममेती मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड देर इज नथिंग फिट टू बी आफर टू सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सो वाट कैन ई आफर टू सुप्रीम लॉर्ड बिकाज यू द पर्सनलिटी व्यूज इन फ्रंट आफ मेज भगवती शाश्वत पुंगवा विभूमि वाट ई कैन गिव हिम नथिंग इज सूटबल टू बी आफर टू हिम इन दिस मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड बिकाज द मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड एवरी थिंग इज अंडर द पर्व्यू आफ पोसे अंड फार सिगो देर फोर ई मेक ए गिफ्ट आफ मई थाट्स अलोन ओनली मई थाट्स आर् नाट पोसेंग एनी फीलिंग्स आफ अहम अमेति सो लैट मी आफर मई pure thoughts as a gift to supreme lord because since he has come all the way here just to see me before my passing away so like that bishma is expressing his gratitude by offering a gift to a gift to krishna so what kind of gift he is offering he is offering his pure thoughts unto krishna so these verses are basically the pure thought of bishma so in that way we need to see them So there, there is a question. Uh, uh, pure thoughts meaning uh, thinking about Lord, like uh, what, how it would be like if I think that I want to offer my thoughts to Krishna. So it would be remembering the Lord. Pure thoughts means verse number thirty-two to forty-two. Whatever Bishma is saying in thirty verse number thirty-two to forty-two are his pure thoughts. So when we go through all these verses, so that kind of consciousness is unlike us to pure thoughts. If we also possess same consciousness, then we are also of pure thoughts. So something like that. Without any conception of me and mine, so that kind of thoughts are pure thoughts. So now let us see the dialogue goes like this. So Bhishma is saying that since Krishna had come from long way, I must give him a gift. So in this material world. when somebody comes to our home when we give a gift do we expect some written gift when we go to their home hari krishna do we expect some written gift no. or not yes 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 we yes, no, no, maybe some some people no. may expect not sometimes But, uh, did, always I, i i personally seen in my home <laughs> since childhood <laughs> they actually keep uh, counting actually. i have given them 1000 rupees worth gift when they come to when they come next time they should give at least 1000 rupees worth gift if it is less that's all they are gone they are insulted criticized chastised bad rumors are spread around i have given gift big bada gift to them they have given very a chota gift both kanjus the entire world is filled with such kind of things only <laughs> in this world we always expect in return more than what we give people go to temple break a coconut and ask for promotion in their job which will have increment of more than what their current salary some example i am giving so something like that in this world we see people who give also desire written gift to take for themselves so my dear bishma are you expecting something from lord so such kind of question might come then bishma says my thoughts are without desire matir with trishna trishna means material desire with trishna means without any material desires i am offering my pure thoughts without anything expecting in return i offer them to bhagwan who is full of six wondrous qualities so bishma is saying that no 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 return gift i am just offering them because since i am offering to bhagwan let me offer <clears throat> but the lord is famous as narayana so why are you not offering to narayana why are you offering to bhagwan <coughs> then bishma said that no no he is not famous as narayana instead he is famous as the best of the yadu dynasty shashwata pungava so something like that then the question is but narayana is generally famous as bhagwan for all time 
it is our understanding also in india that from childhood we have heard about narayana only vishnu is the supreme lord vishnu is the supreme lord after joining in iskan we hear that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead the same question is asked to bhishma also and for bhishma says that there is no greatness superior to his he is the source of narayana himself though narayana is considered to be the greatest among all vishnu forms in the material world but the source of narayana is krishna so let me offer my pure thoughts on to krishna so thus he is establishing the siddhanta bhishma is establishing the siddhanta so he attained profusely the highest bliss with his own yadavas and pandavas krishna is closely connected with yadavas and pandavas as long as he is in the midst of yadavas and pandavas krishna derived unlimited pleasure because he is with his intimate devotees how can he not derive unlimited pleasure something like that the main qualities of the lord have thus been described so the abo 3 4 line starts establishes the main principal qualities of krishna and the secondary qualities of krishna are mentioned in the last line what is that you contact maya by glancing మాయాధ్యక్షేన ప్రకృతి సూయతే సా చరాచరం మమ యోనిర్ మహద్ బ్రహ్మ తస్మిన్ గర్భం దదామ్యహం సో లైక్ దట్ యాజ్ కృష్ణ సేస్ ఇన్ భగవద్గీత లార్డ్ కాంటాక్ట్స్ మాయాదేవి బై గ్లా జస్ట్ బై గ్లాన్సింగ్ ఓన్లీ నాట్ ఫిజికల్లీ ఫర్ ఎవాల్వింగ్ మహతత్వ అండ్ అదర్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ విచ్ ఫ్రమ్ ప్రకృతి అండ్ ఈవెన్చువల్లీ బై కాంబినేషన్ ఆఫ్ విచ్ దేర్ కమ్స్ ద మెటీరియల్ క్రియేషన్ భవ ప్రవాహ so by glancing upon prakruti mahavishnu creates mahavishnu with expansion of lord krishna creates the 24 material elements starting with mahatatva and by their combination there comes unlimited number of material universes so you do this particular activity of material creation by your forms of purusha avataras karna daksha vishnu garbha daksha vishnu and shiro daksha vishnu and this is your secondary activity creation maintenance and annihilation of this material world is your secondary activity your primary activity is to be in the association of your devotees and give them pleasure and experience pleasure yourself that is krishna's primary activity that's why he is called as leela purushottam bhagavan lord krishna is the leela purushottam bhagavan he wants to uh, perform leelas with his devotees and give them happiness and experience happiness himself only expanding as purusha avatar as he takes care of the material creation maintenance and annihilation it is his secondary activity is not primary activity so this is about tatva of lord krishna siddhanta of lord krishna so having stated having established the position of lord krishna now bhishma is going to talk about what kind of thoughts are there in his heart now when he was about to give up his body so in the couple of verses he talks about lord krishna's compassionate nature what kind of dealings lord krishna has with his devotees the yadavas pandavas and other devotees so all those things are mentioned in the upcoming verses tribhuvana kamanam tamala varnam రవికర గౌరవరాంబరద దానే వపురళకులావృతానాబ్జం విజయ సకేరతిరస్తు మే అనవధ్య which resembles the bluish color of the tamala tree his body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems upper middle and the lower may his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp be the object of my attraction and may i not desire fruitive results yeah some thoughts about krishna's form is transcendental form so even mother kunti also tells about krishna's form in the previous chapter 
కృష్ణాయ వాసుదేవాయ దేవకి నందనాయచ నందగోపకుమారాయ గోవిందాయ నమో నమ నమో పంకజ నాభాయ నమో పంకజ మాల నమో పంకజ నిత్రాయ నమస్తే పంకజ అంగరే సమ్ డీటెయిల్స్ అబౌట్ ద ఫామ్ దాట్ మెన్షన్ సమ్ సిమిలర్లీ దాట్ భీష్మ ఈస్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ లార్డ్స్ ట్రాన్స్మిటల్ ఫామ్ లెట్ మీ హ్యావ్ ప్యూర్ ప్రేమ అనవద్య రతి రస్తుమే లెట్ దేర్ బి రతి ఆన్ టు యువర్ ట్రాన్స్మెంటల్ ఫామ్ ఫర్ కృష్ణ హూ ఈ ద ఫ్రెండ్ ఆఫ్ అర్జున విజయ సఖే హూ పొసెసెస్ ఏ ట్రాన్స్మెంటల్ బాడీ డిజైర్డ్ బై ద ఇన్హాబిటెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద త్రీ వర్ల్డ్స్ త్రీ భువన కమణం బపు ద లార్డ్స్ ఫామ్ మళ్ళీ డిజైర్డ్ బై మీన్స్ Every person in this material world want to have the darshan of Lord's transcendental form, that of Krishna. Who would not want to have the darshan of Lord Krishna's form? So resplendent, beautiful. So I desire to have the darshan of that form, like that Bhishma is sailing. When I am about to, I, I desire to see that form when I am about to leave my body in that way. Of course, Bhishma was seeing Krishna from the beginning of Mahabharata, we can see. Since that time, Krishna was associated with Pandavas. he we would very frequently visit astinapur and bishma uh, uh, dev would have darshan but especially is talking about at this point of time at the time of death i want to have the darshan of that form which is desired by the everyone in this material world in three planet systems so in that way which is clothed with intense yellow garments staining in the sun ravikara gauravara ambaram dadhane gauravara ambaram vara refers to varna varna is color gaura varna golden color pitambara clothes lord krishna was wearing and right now bhishma was lying on the death bed it is a day time a sunny day and lord's clothes are shining brightly in the sunlight that's so bhishma is telling that ravikara by the rays of the sun gauravara ambaram the clothes which are of the complexion of gaura varna dadane they are shining brightly and lord krishna's complexion is dark like tamala tree tamala varnam we have a tamal tree in our undavan forest maharaj desired that we should have a tamal tree and uh, kadamba tree krishna's color is like tamal tree grow gadarani always uh, uh, likes the tamal trees and radharani's color is uh, the color of kadamba tree krishna likes kadamba tree something like that so tamala varnam krishna's bodily complexion is like that of tamal tree and whose lotus feet is surrounded by locks of hair alaka kula avruta anana abjam alaka kula avruta anana abjam so lord's feet is decorated with curly hairs as we recite in damodar ashtakam something like that so this is the side which bhishma was currently gazing at lord krishna whatever bhishma is seeing he is telling us in these verses so we can understand what kind of form bishma is looking at at the time of his departure so in that way let me have pure prema without desire for material results anything written for the friend of arjuna who accepts a body which is desired by all persons in the upper middle and lower planets in the material world which is clothed and that means lord's form is clothed in garments golden in the sun rays sun rays i saw that intense yellow form i saw that intense yellow from his upper and lower cloth sparkling in the sun rays as he stood on the chariot of arjuna of course currently he is uh, seeing him in front of him but bishma is also remembering during the battlefield during the battle was going and kurukshetra battle was going on krishna was standing in the chariot of arjuna in front of arjuna while battle was going on through the day that time what bhishma saw is kind of recollecting now so in that way of course even now also he is wearing yellow garments that time also he was really wearing yellow garments he always wears yellow garment so of course in the future verses talks about the different episodes that happened in the mahabharata battle so from that point of view bhishma is recollecting his cherished form of lord krishna in the battlefield as a chariot driver of arjuna that's why he is referred him as vijaya sake the friend of arjuna so in that way and then it says that my thoughts take the form of a prayer to have his prema for the most beautiful krishna at the chariot of arjuna so my desired form of lord krishna is 
the partha saradi form the chariot driver of arjuna that is my object of worship that is my desired form i am recollecting that form so like that bishma is continuing in the prayers of following verses also there is no use there is no use of the second person though krishna was present before him so though krishna was standing in front of him bishma is not talking about the krishna standing in front of him bishma is talking remembering that form of krishna in the battlefield of krishna krukshetra where krishna acting at the partha saradi or partha saradi so that is what is remembered by bishma here this indicates his attraction for the sweetness of lord absorbed in veera rasa during the battle and his absorption in relishing it so bishma was really collecting lord krishna's form as the ratasaradi of arjuna in the battle of kurukshetra and he is expressing his joy to krishna who is standing in front of him having spoken of lord krishna's face surrounded by locks of hair bishma deva cannot give up that sweetness again he describes the form of lord krishna in more details so he continues the description of lord's form <clears throat> little more details especially in the battlefield of kurukshetra while bishma was fighting with arjuna so like that so basically he is recollecting is actually is what he is doing is smaran so that cherished form of krishna is remembering very nicely ಯುಧಿತುರಗರಜೋ ವಿದು ವಿದುತಿರಗರಜೋ ವಿದುರ್ಮ ವಿಶ್ವ ಕುಚಲಿತ ಶ್ರಮವಾರಿ ಅಲಂಕೃತ ಮಮ ನಿಶಿತ ಸರಿ ಮಮ ನಿಶಿತ ಸರೈರ್ ವಿಭಿದ್ಯಮಾನ ತ್ವಚಿ ವಿಲಸತ್ ಕವಚೇಸ್ತು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆತ್ಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಶಿಪ್ the flowing hair of lord krishna turned ashen due to his due to the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses and because of his labor beads of sweat wetted his face all these decorations intensified by the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows were enjoyed by him let my mind thus go unto sri krishna yeah some more details about his transcendental form and his causeless mercy may my mind concentrate on krishna krishna astu atma generally trila bhaktidan shar tagur whenever whenever a guest comes to him while departing he would always say that krishna mati rastu something like that if you remember atma with mati krishna astu mati matlab krishna mati rastu so that is how he said that may my mind concentrate on krishna whose faith was decorated with wavy hair vishwa kacha wavy hair means so in the battlefield when battle was going on when bhishma and arjuna was fighting lord krishna's hair was actually flowing because they would run in chariots he had left and right very fast speed because of that fast and swiftness the hair of krishna would be flowing horizontally instead of falling down something like that and not only it is wave, it is uh, the whose face was decorated with wavy hair which is not only flowing across it is covered with the dust raised by the horses as the chariots were running here and there lot of dust would raise and the entire hair of krishna will be covered with lot of dust and also tossed all about because of the speed of his driving and with perspiration because of his great effort in protecting arjuna since krishna is engaged in driving the chariot left right here and there etc he was into lot of activity so his body would be uh, perspiring and uh, whose armor was shown brightly pierced slightly by my sharp arrows while fighting generally it is the strategy of a warrior first they will destroy the chariot driver then they destroy the horses then they destroy the warrior because as long as the chariot driver is there he can maneuver the horses here and there and uh, uh, deflect the arrows thrown by the opponent party if uh, the warrior cannot counteract them something like that otherwise if the driver is killed 
the horse the horses cannot go here and there are horses can go abruptly yeah, at long uh, different direction so then they would kill the horses if horses are killed standard is stable when the warrior is stable you can aim the target and hit the target and kill him very quickly that is the general strategy but in order to protect arjuna krishna would always be careful to travel here and there here and there so by the way in order to kill chariot driver the opponent warriors would throw arrows so like that bhishma threw many arrows many times and krishna's armor was pierced by so many arrows and with all the arrows your personality your armor looking very brightly so this is the vision which bhishma was recollecting now or at the time when he was on the deathbed so it's like that he is completely re- recollecting what is happening in the battlefield while bhishma was fighting with arjuna so in that way the face is decorated with hair thrown all about because of the speed of the chariot and colored with the dust raised by the horses even in what is not beautiful beauty can be found ordinarily when the hair is hair is left to open and filled with lot of dust it looks very ugly but bhishma is saying that your hair which is flowing in the air because of the swiftness of the horses and the chariot and it is covered with lot of dust but it looks very beautiful that is the greatness of krishna the face is decorated with perspiration arising from effort of controlling the horses and chariot this indicates krishna's efforts because of his affection for arjuna so krishna is so much affectionate to arjuna he wanted to protect arjuna so he was driving chariot in a skillful manner lord krishna's skin was pierced by bhishma's sharp arrows just as the man involved in love desires derives happiness from the bite marks of the bold lover krishna the most courageous warrior in the mood of fighting derived pleasure from my strength in the form of wounds from my arrows so bhishma threw many arrows many times at krishna because unless until the chariot driver is killed the warrior cannot be killed that is the general war strategy so in order to apparently to kill the chariot driver bhishma would throw so many arrows towards krishna but with all those har- uh, arrows which are piercing through the armor and eventually piercing the body of krishna but krishna was not at all becoming angry with bhishma instead he is deriving pleasure from bhishma so bhishma is throwing arrows at me wow and those arrows are skipped by arjuna and uh, coming to me all the way like that krishna is actually oh bhishma what a great warrior like that krishna was actually feeling happy so in that way one should not think that i even overcome by the mood of fighting with krishna was ever devoid of prema so bhishma is saying that don't don't think that just because i have thrown arrows at krishna doesn't mean that krishna i am envious of krishna no 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 i have love of maximum order towards krishna out of that love only i have thrown arrows to krishna to increase the happiness of krishna lord krishna's skin was not really pierced because he was wearing an armor which shone brightly it means that the arrow slightly pierced the armor even though the arrows are piercing krishna's body but krishna would be more happy because it is the exchange of love between two warriors like the acharyas give the example of exchange of love between two lovers something like that so proba says that bhishma throwing arrows at krishna is like two friends one person throwing flowers at other person how uh, pleasing they are so when arrows are thrown by bhishma when they are piercing through the armor of krishna krishna is also expressing the same pleasure like uh, thrown flowers be thrown at by flowers something like that so this is the dealings between bhishma and krishna were going on so that bhishma is recollecting and um, this is uh, last verse for today we'll just briefly discuss this and we'll stop and take a couple of questions we would have sapadi saki vacho sapadi saki vacho nishamya madde nija parayo balayo ratam nivishya sthitavati parasainikayur akshna
ಕೃತವತಿ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಸಕೇರತಿರ್ಮಸ್ತು between the soldiers of Aruj, arjuna and duryodhana and while they, there he shot in the light span of the opposite party by his merciful plan this was done simply by looking and is looking at the enemy as we fix on that krishna sapadi saki vacho nishamya madde following the instruction of arjuna krishna kept the chariot in between the two armies of the battle May I have prema for the chariot driver of Arjuna. Partha rakte, partha sake ratir. Mama astu. Mati rastu. So, who placed the chariot between the opposing armies? Immediately on hearing Arjuna's request and situated there by his glance, took away the prarabdha karmas of the opposing party. when arjuna said that senayo rubeyor matte ratam stapai stapaya mechuta yavadeta nirikshayam yoddu kaman avasthitan bhagavad gita we study this krishna told that oh arjuna please station my chariot between the two armies so i can view at the commencement of the war those situated with a desire to fight and can see my companions in the battle i want to see who are assembled in the battle of kurukshetra before beginning the battle please take my chariot between the two armies i want to see so immediately krishna took the chariot in between the two armies especially in front of bhishma drona etc bhishma drona pramukata and then krishna told see here is bhishma your grandfather who took care of you from childhood after the death of your father here is drona here is krupacharya who taught you all education at home at in astinapur here is drona who taught you all the military art here is shelya who is your mama who is your uncle the madri elder brother who took care of you like a fatherly figure so like that here is ashwatthama son of your uh, uh, spirit guru and uh, like that all the great personalities are introduced by krishna and bhishma says that by introducing all of us by showing us to you krishna has taken our prarabdha karmas krishna had actually buried all of us krishna had killed all of us at the time itself just by his glance showing to arjuna this is bhishma this is drona this is karna he took away their lives this actually indicates he took away their prarabdha karma since it will be said later yam iha niriksha hata gata swarupam those who saw him on the battlefield of kurukshetra attained their original forms after death and those who are on the party of kauravas and the pandavas who died while looking at krishna in the battlefield of kurukshetra who understanding krishna to be supreme personality of god it and gave up their bodies they have attained the highest perfection so it is like that so that is the special mercy which lord krishna showed to everyone so taking this reference just as krishna gave special mercy to all those people in the battlefield that time only krishna coming in between two armies he took away all our prarabdha karma he gave us liberation now i want to see the same krishna once again before giving up my body whoever sees krishna at the time of death or remembers krishna at the time of death will attain krishna for certainty so there is no that krishna even establishes in bhagavad gita so so with that understanding as a mahajan in order to establish a proper example how to give up one's body bhishma had requested krishna to come in front of him and now bhishma remembering his desired form of krishna is object of meditation partha saradi krishna artha saradi krishna and is expressing his gratitude to lord krishna in various ways so we'll stop with this verse today correction Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Yes Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Thank you. Hare God Krishna. bless you Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you Prabhu. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhu. Thank you Prabhu ji. Thank you Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna. Ganvat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Yeah, yes, Prabhu, what is your question? Yes, 
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी आई है ओके प्रभु कंटिन्यू आई है ओके सो आई वांट टू आस्क रिगार्डिंग द ग्लास ऑफ अ Uh, there are various uh, results occur when Lord glance. It said that uh, Lord glance on the Maya Devi to impregnate the uh, uh, prakriti, and here we see that by his glance he has reduced the lifespan. So, yeah. wh- what is what is the nature of Lord glance? Means it's a uh, end result is something is every time we see is different. No, no, forget about the glance. With what intention, Lord, Lord is glancing? You see that he is looking at Maya Devi for the purpose of creation. He is looking at the army in order to uh, take away their part of the karmas. When he looks at the devotees in order to exchange his loving, affectionate dealings with the devotees. During Govardhan Lila, also he was looking at gopis who were standing at the far distance. That is to convey the, his loving sentiments toward them. It is not the glance. important it is about the intent with which lord is glancing at people that we have to see okay so yes. what is what, what is the reason why that uh, lord have different intents means uh, for devotee it is by the most merciful glance which uh, uh, kind of uh, purify and also fill fill the devotees with the prema of lord is that it's not like the project see the circumstances what is what is the scene in which the glance is give glance is described you see the entire past time don't take the glance out of abstract it is not a abstract glance every past time wherever glance is described it has a particular emotion so based on that emotions it is there here we have to see so here lord krishna just showing everyone to arjuna in lord krishna has come to establish dharma and all these great personalities are siding adharma so they are great warriors by taking away their prarabdha karmas so lord krishna is shortening their life of course from these personalities like bhishma drona shalya etc he is giving them liberation for all other people because they have uh, touched the hair of draupadi so their life span is reduced by like by looking at them by his glance he is also kala he kind of caused their end so in that way it is all depends on different uh, uh, background events okay okay so the, the miscreants whom lord glance do, do they also achieve a good destination or they go to see prabhu ji see there is, we will discuss about this in the next class more detailedly there is one side lord is glancing and other side the opposite person also glancing even though apparently we read that everyone in the mahabharat battlefield because they were die while dying they were looking at krishna they attained perfection like that verse comes in third canto bhagavatam that is not like that there is an intent into it not just by looking by the lord or not just looking at the lord not that what is there in the heart of the person also important while dying even though we may be looking at lord but if you are thinking about lord as a ordinary human being and it is because of you only i am dying that kind of mentality one dies that person that does not attain liberation even though enemy looking while dying looking if he looks at the lord thinking that lord to be the supreme lord then he will attain liberation so that is the understanding okay okay so one consciousness is important ah all are there okay. glance is only an external emotion to the two people the person who is glancing the person who is receiving the glance also Okay, okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hi. Thank you, Prabhu. Actually, my doubt was also same question. So, okay. actually, in the one of the class, you were told that the Madhavat sir in this Mahabharat also told that this after four thousand of Kali Yuga, all these warriors will very appear in the Kali Yuga. So that was my doubt. So it will clear. And next question. Not all the warriors. Not all the warriors. The not, not, not all the warriors. Major, major warriors. Okay, Kaurava warriors. the kauravas and also some asuri kings they because they died in the battlefield they go to swarga for 4300 years then they take birth that is what madhvacharya says oh again prabhu next question is uh, uh, in this we have you have told ki this uh, at the day uh, that uh, after the death of uh, during the death of this uh, 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 abhimanyu uh, arjuna is taken about to kill the jayadrath 
and mm. that day was the uh, this uh, solar eclipse so my ah, yes. project ki how come this uh, drona charge like this great uh, rishi they mm. don't know this today the eclipse and uh, who is standing there in their eclipse in the middle of this people chodo 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 who was standing in their midst krishna is standing na yes ve krishna ke samne kaun kya chal kar sakte hai abhi krishna soche chutna means if he wants he can bewilder everyone can't he bewilder drona be drona and others yeah, yeah. thodi and samay my, ke liye yes and my second in this question is prabhu ji ki generally in that time this vedic civilized culture even mm-hmm. there is eclipse then our, as every people will go to take bath and to perform their purity then they start something new but mm-hmm. here in this of the army they again they are start fighting also so Prabhuji, battle is, see battle is going and battle ke samne us sab rules bolo mat us sab rules basically brahmanical duties ghar pe rahega to aaram se kar sakte yuddh bhumi mein rahega to sab ye karna wo karna karke aisa nahi bol sakte okay. when you are on the battlefield bas battle karte raho those duties you can do after coming home okay okay thank you prabhu ji so these are not like uh, harden generally these rules are spoken in terms of brahmanical culture brahmanas are supposed to follow all these rules and regulation very pakka kshatriyas when they go to battle battle can go day and night without any interruption of course if required they may take in, in between a small break and do the needful but otherwise battle is battle when you are into it you need to do it need of the hour you cannot say because i need to do this rule asana there is exceptions after the battle how long battle will continue maybe 10 days 15 days 20 days one month after that you can do you can resume no problem okay, okay. and the pro generally I, we have seen some like they are they are people, people are some story that he allowed krishna has sent his darshan to cover the sun is it uh, means there is a rumor means this is authentic or it is i don't know i don't know i also don't know need to read mahabharat how exactly okay. happened thank you prabhu even if lord sends sudarshan chakra also because there is the eclipse eclipse will happen either with rahu or sudarshan chakra whichever it is eclipse is eclipse only okay, mm. okay. thank you prabhu okay hari krishna hey, thank you very much ha ah, ismat ji prabhu ji ka one last hey, question prabhu ji prabhu ji ha please go on Yes, Prabhu ji, I wanted to ask if uh, uh, somebody who's completed Bhakti Shastri would like ah. to join Bhakti Vai Bhava now. Is it hmm. possible? Ah, if they can join if they are okay because we've already done almost nine chapters. If they are okay with that, they can join. Okay, and what about the test? They'll have to cover up, no? And no, if they want to do, they can do. Otherwise, no problem. But from now on, they should do it. Whatever we are discussing, if they do that hmm. properly, that is fine. the previous okay. test can be exempted no problem if they want to do they can do otherwise there is no strict rule that they should do everything yeah but okay. from now on they should continue to do yeah thank you prabhu ji okay hari krishna prabhu ji dhanwat pranam yes, yes mataji prabhu ji there is a question like uh, it is very jaisa aapne bataya ki last mein hum jo end mein bhagwan ko dekhne ka hamara ichha hona chahiye wohi desire humko लाइक like, uh, उसी से हमारा आगे का डिसाइड होगा नेक्स्ट जन्म लेकिन देन अवर कर्मा डजेंट रोल जो कर्मा हमने पूरा जिंदगी किया है उनका कोई hmm. रोल नहीं रहेगा प्रभु जी लाइफ अगली लाइफ के लिए इट्स नॉट दैट व्हेन वी टेक अ भक्ति देयर इज नो मोर कर्मा द टाइम डिवोटी स्टार्ट्स भक्ति विद फुल हार्ट एंड सोल सो देयर इज नो प्रिंसिपल ऑफ कर्मा नाउ every activity that we do becomes bhakti activity if we really do as per the lord krishna's instructions yat karoshi yadashnashi yajjoshi tadashi tapashati konte tat kurusho madarpanam doing each and every activity starting with drinking water eating prasad as an offering to krishna then there is no karma for any activity even if some karmas are past some karmas are pending from the past activities they are all removed by krishna's bhakti so no worry we need to concentrate about practicing bhakti whole heartedly 100% instead of worrying about whether karma will be there or not etc etc and prabhu ji then like we do we follow all the rules regulations as per our like we our sincerity and like that but prabhu ji mm. 
few anarthas we feel that we that are inside and we can't control so what to do like we, we are feeling that okay because we can't pressurize this feeling now if it is coming we feel that this is this feeling is there but we can't mm. control then how to deal with that same for uh, thousands of lifetimes we have accumulated all the anarthas they cannot be removed in one lifetime so we need to work hard for some time slowly they will go away they will not go away instantly so we may think that we are following everything prakka but still there is there are so many uh, i mean we need to examine ourselves what we are doing how we are doing it with what consciousness how much sincerity etc etc so we, need, we i mean at least i can say from my side we have to work a lot in order to come to right track we are practicing now a kind of so called bhakti not exactly bhakti as, as per our current status we can say like that that is the problem of prabhu ji when we examine then we feel that oh we are nowhere like we we are feeling we are following we are, we nowhere, are nowhere. that is, that is not that should not that should not create disappointment in us that should keep, uh, give us uh, uh, challenge so i am nowhere let me do something karke aage badhna chahiye one should not become disappointed that okay i am no at least we started na for millions of life we are not worried about bhakti only at least this life we have started so let us take it further so like and that. one more thing um, my, my question is there prabhu ji that what happens like uh, here in lagos uh, in temple we get so many services so we don't we don't get proper time for studies like we, service is there we have to cook for lord we have to cook for guru maharaj so we don't get time for like studies more in mumbai it was time for studies more so how to see that because chanting i do uh, so, our Mataji, you please was, you yeah. please talk to your uh, authorities your counselors so that you get some time so what okay. i can okay. that is your yeah. local uh, this thing okay prabhu ji no problem thank Hare you prabhu ji hari krishna thank you very much to all the devotees who stay till now hari krishna grandhas bhagavatam ki jai shri prabhupada ki jai anand koti vaishnava